Trader, trade, trader, Cobb Crypto Podcast. Podcast. This is the Trader Cobb Crypto Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trader Cobb Crypto Show. Hope you're all very, very well. Don't forget that today's show is brought to you by TraderCobb.com. That's C-O-B-B. Now, TraderCobb.com, what we do is we educate traders. We teach technical trading strategies, my trading strategies, with literal written checklists, making it very easy for you to understand how to execute your trades flawlessly. Jump across to TraderCobb.com and sign up for your free bi-weekly video newsletter where you can get plugged into content from me and the team twice per week, and you can have a look through the website. So on today's show... I want to go through and talk to you about how we think in probabilities. What are probabilities? Why do we use them? And how do we benefit our trading from this? So it's very, very important because I say it often that as a trader, all we've got is our probabilities. So if that's all we've got, we better be pretty bloody good at using them and understanding how to use them. So how? How do we start to think in probabilities and how do we train a mind to think in probabilities. Now, today's show is inspired by one of the members in my Slack community. Uh, he's gone through all the courses and is in the group there now. His name is Matt. I'll just keep him as Matt. I won't say his surname. His question was more specifically how to train our mind to think in probabilities, and I'm going to cover it now. So thank you, Matt. And if anybody else has any suggestions, please do let me know, and I will see if I can get something out. Because this show is about you educating you and helping you to become the best trader you possibly can be by sometimes nominating some areas that you may not be familiar with that you need to become aware of. So thinking in probabilities, how do we do it? Well, as a trader, the reason I've got my written checklist, my bonus, my essential factors and my bonus factors is quite simply because it increases probabilities by having the checklist. So let me take you through this. Essential rules are there to make sure that we've at least got, it, as we would suggest, the essentials. And the bonus factors increase the probabilities on top. So basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to break that down into a logical and easy way to understand. Probabilities are how we trade. You match, you match a high probability outcome with risk management, and you've got something that you can trade from. Now, don't get this wrong. Get this, sorry, don't get this wrong. You can still make money if you have a low probability trading outcome, provided that the reward to risk ratio is high. So it's not just about win-loss ratios, it's about win-loss ratios and reward to risk ratio. So let me go back to probabilities thinking. Okay, you need an edge to make money. If you know that 60% of the time your outcome is going to be X over 100 trades, you know that about 60% of them you're going to get the win that you're after or the outcome that you're after. Once you've got an edge and once you have that probability, you can start to trade around that and manage your risk. So when we're thinking in trades, people look at one trade and they feel like, oh, it's a profit. Yes, that's great. It's a loss. Oh, that's not so good. That's what an amateur trader does. They let the outcome of a trade dictate their emotion in that moment in time. A professional trader looks at each trade as being one trade within a sea of many. Just the same as, you know, one drip in the ocean means nothing to the ocean. Not to that drip of water, it's everything. Well, you've got to think like the ocean, not like the drip. And you've got to start to focus on the bigger picture. Once you find a probability, you execute that over a large sample set of trades to produce, uh, you know, your outcome and your income. All right. So how do we actually start? Start to think in probabilities. Well, the one thing that you've got to do is you've got to stick to your rules, okay? So if you have a losing trade, it doesn't matter. Once you place a trade, whatever happens, happens. You, you cannot influence the market. You can only influence your own decisions. So if we go through a coin flip, just to give you a really easy understanding example. If you're going to flip a coin, one side's heads, one side's tail, nothing tricky about it, just heads and tails. We've got a 50% chance of a coin landing on a head and a 50% chance that it lands on tails. Now, if the coin lands on heads... If the coin lands on heads, you're going to win $10. And if it lands on tails, you're going to lose $10. If you flip the coin 100 times, you'd expect that the number would be something around about $0 because it's a 50-50 
probability that it will land on either heads or tails. It might be ten dollars, twenty. It might be a little bit either way. But we, we, the more we flip the coin, the more likely it's coming back to zero. This is essentially the most easy way to explain probabilities because it is a dead set 50-50 chance. The more times you flip it, the more times the outcome will be 50-50. Okay? So in that case, we're not going to make any money, are we? What if we change a single variable? Okay, and this is how the risk-reward comes into this as well. This is how we start to think as a trader. If we change a single variable, obviously on a 50-50 coin toss, we, we can't, you know, we could change it and make it, we could cheat. We could have two heads, or we could have two tails, and we could always win, but that's not going to last very long, okay? So we're going to keep it even at 50-50. We're going to keep the probability of success at 50%. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the reward. So if the, if, if the, uh, if the coin lands on head on heads you're going to win twenty dollars and if the coin lands on tails you're going to lose ten dollars and my question to you is this it's a 50 50 chance if you win you win 20 if you lose you lose 10 would you play this game ask yourself that question give me that answer the answer should be yes it should be yes because what you've done is you've changed not the actual game itself, but you've changed the outcome. Now, if you could get a 50-50 coin toss or a 50-50 outcome on anything, but when you win, you get twice as much as what you lose when, you go, when it goes the wrong way, you have an edge. You haven't got an edge in terms of the, um, the strategy and the probability of it landing on heads or tails. You've got an edge because your reward is greater than your loss. Now, in this case, in, in the last case, it's 50-50. We flip the coin 100 times. We come back to the figure of zero because it's 50-50 and it's $10 loss, $10 win. Everything's even. In this case, we've got $20 win, $10 loss. Over the 100 flips, let's say we get 50% heads, 50% tails. Now, with your $20 wins, you net a $500 profit. That's how probabilities work, and that's how reward-to-risk ratios work. Now, in trading, we're not looking for something that's 50-50 unless we can have a high probability of getting a larger reward multiple. Now, what these trading strategies that I teach create is a high probability of success. It is not a 50-50, and I cannot give you the exact percentage number because it's different for everybody. Everybody's different. The trading strategy, if you have a good one, it doesn't mean you're going to get the same results as me or your neighbor or whoever else is using it. But with these strategies, you're looking, if I look at a one-to-one, okay, and, and go through a lot of the trades that I've been putting up in the Slack group and others that have been putting it up and taking in what other people are saying and just sort of do a very rough estimate, I'd say you're looking at about between 60 and 70% on a very conservative estimate of at least getting one-to-one. That means if you're risking $10, you're going to get your first target of $10. Now, of course, a lot of what I teach is to scale out, which means once you get your first target, you scale out so you're in a risk-free position because everything always is about minimizing our risk. If you've got a 70%, 60%, or even 50% outcome of getting one-to-one, you've still got something to work with. It's then we make our money after one-to-one, isn't it? It's when the market moves further and we trail our stop up. It's when we decide we're not going to go for a one-to-one. Or we'll go for a one-to-one, then we'll go for a final target of of six-to-one, seven-to-one, ten-to-one, whatever it may be. So it's it's, it's a little bit more different different than a a coin toss. But thinking in probabilities is about focusing on a larger sample set. It's not about focusing on the one trade. One trade following a simple set of rules that is very structured, it's either going to win or it's going to lose or it's going to break even depending on how you manage that trade. But over a large sample set, if you can be in the right headspace with the right routine, the right structure and execute flawlessly, 
you can be pretty comfortable that you're going to make money over a large sample. So that's why it's really important to take screenshots of your trades, report on your win and losing trades. And also at the end of each period, so maybe every, every 10 trades, 20 trades, 50 trades, 100 trades, see how many were flaws, how many were not, and see what the outcome was for that. That way you can really drill down and work out what areas that you can actually work on to increase your probability going forward. So guys, I hope that's been beneficial. It's how to think in probabilities and how to relate that to trading. Have a listen to this a couple of times if you need to, and have a great day. Don't forget this show is brought to you by tradercob.com. If you haven't already, guys, go across, have a look at the website, go and subscribe to the bi-weekly video newsletter, and have a fantastic day. Bye for now. The Trader Cobb Crypto Podcast. Check out tradercob.com because experience matters.